What's up guys, my name is Asia, I am The Basic Christian. Today we're talking about honesty with God and are you letting God lead? So I was talking to one of my friends about one of the most important parts of their life, which at that time was their relationship. And it was so important because there was a kid involved and they weren't sure if they should leave or if they should stay. And so they were asking what my advice was. And honestly, I don't have advice to whether you should leave or stay in your relationship unless there's some type of abuse or something like that going on. And so my advice is to always seek God, ask God what you should do in your relationship, because I'm not an advocate of breaking up people that God has put together and it might not look like what God had planned if those people aren't acting according to his word. So my advice was to seek God, ask God what he wants to do, because your opinion doesn't matter. My opinion doesn't matter unless we know what God said. What does God want you to do? And here's the thing. I believe that my friend avoided seeking God because they knew that what God wanted was not what they wanted. And sometimes honesty with God and being obedient to God means that you're not going to get your way. It means that you're going to have to take the difficult route. It means that you're going to have to give up the job. You're going to have to give up the relationship. You're going to have to give up defending yourself. You might have to swallow your pride. And sometimes following God means moving towards the threat and not away from it. Because when you're not in a relationship and when you leave a relationship, that means you don't know what it's going to look like. I don't know how this is going to work. Lord, help me. I don't know what I'm going to look like without that job. I don't know what I'm going to look like without this person in my life. This makes me feel insecure, Lord. I need your help. And sometimes we have to move into the threat and trust that God has our back. Trust that he has our best interest at heart. Trust that he knows what he's doing better than what we know because he sees the end from the beginning. And that's exactly what we see in Judges 14 in Samson's story. So remember, Samson was married. Everyone likes to harp on Samson and Delilah, but Samson was married to a woman that was a Philistine from Timnah before he had ever met Delilah. And the story with her is so short and such a blurb that she doesn't even have a name. But I think if we took a moment just to look at her actions, I think we could learn a lot about our relationships and how we should handle our relationships. So remember, Samson was a Nazarite and he wasn't supposed to cut his hair, he wasn't supposed to drink, but also he was one of God's people. And so he needed to take a wife from his own people and not from the Philistines. But Samson had been to the Philistine, the uh, city of Timnah. He'd been down there and he saw this woman and he just lusted after her. He convinced his parents to go and make her his wife. And so he went on the way to the feast and a lion popped out and he killed the lion. So he goes, meets the wife, and then he comes back. And as he's coming back, the dead lion's body has honey that the um, bees had built up into the carcass. And so he goes in, he pulls out the honey, he's eaten the honey, gives it to his parents, corrupts his parents. And so by the time he ends up going, circling back, going to the feast, Samson now at the wedding feast tells the Philistine leaders a riddle. And it is an unsolvable riddle because you would have had to be with Samson when he killed the lion, when he ate the honey in order to solve that riddle. So no one knew what the answer was. And essentially what happened was when Samson offered the riddle, he said, whoever gets the riddle right, whoever solves the riddle, I'm going to give you 30 linens and 30 pieces of clothing. But if you cannot solve the riddle, you guys have to give me 30 linens and 30 pieces of clothing. And so the feast is seven days and we see the Philistine leaders go to Samson's nameless wife and threaten her. Let's look at Judges 14, 15. The Bible says, on the fourth day, they said to Samson's wife, coax your husband into explaining the riddle for us, or we will burn you and your father's household to death. Did you invite us here to steal our property? So what does Samson's nameless wife do? She goes and cries on him for the rest of the seven days and manipulates the answer out of him. When she manipulates that answer out of him, she takes it and gives it to the Philistine leaders. And the leaders go to Samson and say, we've got the answer. They answer the riddle and Samson now owes them 30 linens and 30 pieces of clothing. But figuring out that he had been manipulated, he flies off the handle. He reacts in such anger and violence that he goes down to the Philistine people and he kills kills 30 of their people. That is his wife's people. He kills them, takes their clothes and honors his side of the bet to the Philistine leaders with the clothes of their dead people. 
And after he honors that bet, when he gets back, he figures out that his father-in-law had taken his wife and given his wife to his best man who was at his wedding. So not only did he get manipulated by his wife, he lost his wife and his best man betrayed him. So Samson gets mad again, and that's where he lands us in Judges 15 verses 4 through 6. The Bible says, So he went out and caught 300 foxes and tied them tail to tail in pairs. Then he fastened a torch to every pair of tails, lit the torches, and let the foxes loose in the standing grain of the Philistines. He burned up the shocks and standing grain together with the vineyards and olive groves. When the Philistines asked who did this, they were told Samson, the Timonite son-in-law, law because he was given to his companion. So the Philistines went up and burned her and her father to death. So here we see Samson catching 300 foxes, tying torches to them, and then burning down everything that's good about the Philistine land. Their olive groves, their, their wheat, their grain, everything was burnt down. And then the crazy part is, even though she had manipulated Samson in the first place to get the answer to the riddle to give to the Philistine leaders, they ended up coming back and killing her anyway. So she did all that manipulation for nothing. Have you ever been in a relationship with someone who chooses to manipulate you for something that you would have helped them with anyway? You don't have to manipulate me. I would have given whatever it is that you're trying to get out of me anyway. And now the relationship's messed up because you chose to preserve yourself instead of preserving the relationship. And the Bible says that those who trust in themselves are fools, but those who walk in wisdom are kept safe. Do you ever think to do something and be dead wrong about it? Because that's what fear does. Fear will push you to manipulate. Fear will push you to lie. Fear will push you into self-preservation mode and cause you to mistreat the people around you. And honesty in relationships is pivotal. Ladies, let me tell you, if you plan to get married, there should be no one on the face of the earth that should be able to talk to your husband and surprise him about information about you. Nothing about you should come as a surprise to your husband. Yup, that sounded like her. Oh yeah, she did that. Uh, nah, that's not her. Because he knows you. He knows your heart. He knows you're not manipulating. He knows you're not acting in a way that preserves yourself. And he knows that you're not acting out of fear. But he knows all of your past. He knows the things that you've been through. He knows the things that you will and will not do. And he gets to have a choice in who he's with. Do not hide who you truly are in your relationships. Honesty is pivotal. Because it's you and I against the world. I don't know about you, but I'm singing like a canary. If something happens and I need to tell my husband, I'm finna snitch. I'm telling everything. Because I know that my husband is going to handle it. I know that whatever I'm going through, I'm a peaceful person. I don't bother people. So when people bother me, know it had to be that way. And married ladies, y'all know. Y'all know for real. Because ain't nobody finna walk up on you and threaten you and you don't tell your husband. That's the first place you gonna go is let me tell my husband. I can't believe he said that. Da, da, da. Yes that's you. Tell me in the comments if I'm lying. But here's the thing with Samson's nameless wife is if she would have just told him the truth, she probably could have helped guide his decisions. Remember wives, we are like the Holy Spirit. We have influence. Our words matter. And so when she told him that there was a threat at hand and asked what he decided to do and what, how we were going to handle it, he could have made a better decision than burning down all of their olive groves. He could have just went and handled the answer to the riddle. And he could have dealt with those Philistine leaders in a much different way than escalating the problem. But it all started with her honesty. We have to stop giving the enemy what he wants. Falling into temptation does not stop the enemy from wanting your life. Pacifying the enemy will not save you. He still wants to see you fall. He still wants you dead. He still wants your head. He wants you to have every problem in the world. He wants you to go insane. He wants you to live in fear. And Jesus never pacified the enemy. He cast him down and said, get thee behind me, Satan. And if you're going to be successful in relationships, you have to start with your relationship with God. God wants your honesty, not your manipulation. And that's why people can go to church. They can hoop, they can holler, they can yell, they can fall out on the ground. They praising and worshiping and everything's great and fun when you're at church. But as soon as you leave the four walls of the church, you out here drinking, you out here clubbing, you lying, you fornicating, and you being mean to every person that you run across. That's because being in God's presence feels good. Being in God's presence lifts up all the filth off of you. But we're treating God like it's a list, like our relationship with him is a bunch of check marks that we have to achieve to get a hundred on our test. 
God doesn't want our manipulation. He wants our honesty. He wants us to go to him about every little thing. He wants us to be honest about the things that are in our heart. Lord, I'm scared. I don't know how this is going to work out. Lord, I'm tired. I've been working on the thing that you told me to work on and it doesn't look like what you said. Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do if I lose this job and they've been threatening me. I don't know how to handle this. Lord, help. God wants your honesty. And not just that, God wants us to be steadfast when the enemy tempts us and when he lies to us. God wants us to stand on his word because we can't please God if we don't have faith. Jesus died to give us all power and authority. And we have to know that he did exactly what he said that he would do. And he is exactly who he said he is. Please believe me, falling into temptation and manipulating to win will not stop the enemy from wanting your life. And it won't end up better than if you were to just follow God in the first place. The devil is a liar. His promises are empty. Don't fall for it. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and we have to learn how to let him lead. So Lord, we thank you for delivering us from temptation. We thank you for keeping us. We thank you that your promises are yes and amen. We thank you that even though sometimes things get scary, that you're always with us, that you're always watching us, and that you always deliver us. You are our deliverer, Jesus. Thank you. So as you move forward from this video, remember the Lord is watching you. His hand is on you. He's concerned about everything concerning you, and he never leaves you alone. His plan for you is good. Even though it might look scary, his plan for you is good, and his promise this is our yes and amen. Thank you so much for watching. Again, my name is Asia. I am the Basic Christian. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, and share. I really appreciate your time. Have a great day, guys. See you in the next video. Peace.